Hello, my name is Chris Bergquist. I'm the Merkin Curator of Education and Engagement at the Colby College Museum of Art in Waterville, Maine. And I'm going to begin our presentation about Art Kits for All by taking us back to March, 2020. And whenever I think back to March, when so many of us closed our doors and became virtual destinations, I still recall that fluttering in my stomach and the feeling of panic and uncertainty. How exactly does a museum work if you can't see the original works of art or create studio projects together or be part of a discussion in the galleries? And I have a feeling that all of us kind of shared that panicky moment trying to figure out our place in this new reality. But you know, when you're faced with so many things that you can't do, you have no choice to start, but to start thinking about what you can do. And more importantly, for all of us who have been part of this initiative, what you can do with others. So today, my colleagues and I are going to share our kit making process, examples of the kits, how our circle of stakeholders and collaborators grew during the past two years, our successes and challenges, and what's next for us. We'll have time for questions and we do have some kits and resources for all of you. So I'd like to begin by giving you a snapshot of Waterville, Maine. We are a community that is located on the ancestral homeland of the Wabanaki peoples. It is a town of about 16,000 in central Maine, about an hour from Portland, an hour from the mountains and an hour from the coast. It has its share of struggles. One of the community's biggest challenges is poverty. The poverty rate in Waterville is 20.2%. In comparison, the rate across the state of Maine is 12.9%. It is a post-industrial mill town that struggles with all the things that come with poverty. And unemployment, food insecurity, not enough affordable housing, and high rates of depression. It also has a lot of activities and spaces that do make it a vibrant place to live. It has an amazing array of outdoor trails, a thriving art scene, an award-winning public library and expansive boys and girls club space. Colby College has about 200 students in its civic engagement program who live downtown and commit to working with community organizations. And the downtown area is changing rapidly with new businesses, a high-end hotel, artist studios, and a forthcoming art center with spaces for plays, performances, films, galleries, and art making programs. Of course, a lot of those things that make the community vibrant were shut down with the pandemic and we all realized we needed to do something. Enter Waterville Creates, an organization whose mission is to strengthen the arts community through thoughtful collaboration. Serena Sanborn, who manages its programs, brought together people from Waterville Public Schools, Waterville Alternative High School, Family Violence Project, and the museum to talk about what we could offer our community to help them in this time of isolation and uncertainty. And we settled on the idea of Art Kits for All. This Art Kit program was created in direct response to the COVID-19 public health crisis designed to keep our community's families engaged and connected to the arts. By providing free art supplies and instructions, this program has offered high quality, accessible art experiences in a completely reimagined way. Art Kits for All has helped all of us to continue fulfilling the mission of our respective organizations. And it has helped us grow in the area of art and wellness. Through the kits, we helped people engage in artistic expression while integrating creative coping strategies. And speaking for the museum, it also allowed us to provide jobs for our museum staff and teaching artists whose work with K through 12 field trips had just disappeared overnight. And it spawned another art kit program developed by the museum's student guides for our campus audiences. From the beginning, it felt like such a natural organic process with each of us sharing our skills and resources in whatever way we could. And looking back on the last two years, we have accomplished a lot. We packed and distributed more than 7,000 kits, collaborated with more than 32 organizations and businesses. We've won several awards and generated a lot of joy for ourselves and the community. So at this point, I'd like to pass things over to Holly Hubbard, who will talk a little bit about our kit making processes and how we got started. Oh, you're muted. Ah. 
Thanks, Chris. So as Chris said, I'm Holly Hubbard. Um, I am a K-12 art teacher and a resident in Waterville. I teach at a local public elementary school. So that means I see over 500 of Waterville's youngest residents on a weekly basis, teaching kindergarten through third grade. I also have two boys of myself who attend the Waterville schools. My family and I would often participate in the local arts programming before the pandemic. We'd go to the Colby College Museum of Art, whether it be for a Saturday morning family-oriented workshop or for their community day and open house. We'd also participate in various programs and offerings through Waterville Creates. Our family loved their Art in the Park program where hands-on materials were often made available. Early on in the pandemic, Lisa Wheeler, fellow art teacher, reached out to me. We both lamented how difficult it was teaching remotely, considering that art making is such a tactile experience, one that's based heavily on the art supplies and the materials available. Knowing not everyone in our community had access to basic art materials, remote lessons were pretty limited. Lisa mentioned to me the forming of a local group of art educators who were trying to reimagine a way to share quality art experiences. They wanted to provide wider access to art despite the obstacles. I knew some of the members of the group as our paths would cross, um, plus every March we'd get together to display student artwork and celebrate Youth Art Month. As Lisa told me more, my ears perked right up and I too wanted to do something positive and actionable. In the early days of the program, we'd pack kits on Monday afternoons. We'd wear gloves and masks and organize supplies of those early kits into Ziploc bags. For a lot of us, it was the only social time outside of our homes. So naturally, when we got together, we'd chat about all the things whether it was an awesome new art supply we'd recently tried out, or if there were, was an interesting exhibit at the art museum or an artist we'd learned about. We talked about what was we were watching on TV, what movies we were watching. We really bonded over the gift of gab. And as we talked, we realized that for each of us, it was really the arts, the films, music, books and crafts we were getting into that was helping us through it all. We all felt art was essential and we were motivated to do more. These casual conversations often led into future art ideas. Each kit typically had a feature artist or art firm form as the inspiration. And from there, we thought like educators, imagining what materials and techniques we could fold in. To give you a sense of the process, one of the early kits we made, we looked to artist Mardson Hartley for inspiration. His subject matter of the rugged Maine coast was something we figured people could relate to as summer was approaching. In that particular kit, we shared a glue line and soft pastel technique that produced effects similar to the style of Hartley's blended colors with strong black compositional lines. We'd pack up boxes of approximately 150 kits after that into our cars and hand them out twice a month at the local farmer's market and community center in town. Those receiving the kits could dig in and find a pamphlet about the kit, including info and a project outlined by Lisa Wheeler fellow art teacher and graphic design extraordinaire. The graphics and logos appeal to all ages and experience levels. It contained info about the artist or theme, a list of materials along with step-by-step -step directions with coordinating color images, making it an easy to read thing. A person could walk away with fun facts, straightforward techniques and ideas to inspire some creation. For some of the kits, we also made coordinating how-to videos. For this particular project, volunteer Michelle LeClaire, a newbie to art making, led us through a lovely demo of her process, emphasizing, if I can do this, anyone can. 
The videos have been made available now on the Waterfield Creates website and their Facebook page. The kits in general were designed as self-contained projects that could also be used open-endedly. During our brainstorm sessions, we talk about what materials we had, what materials we need to order, and engaging techniques we could share while making connections to arts institutions in the community. One time the museum had a lot of extra model magic on hand, so we used what was there and then Serena would order something. Here she ordered Twisty's wire to add to the kit. We really wanted to hand out a variety of materials so people could build up their art supplies at home. Thinking back over all the kits, we handed out pencils, colored pencils, crayons, markers, watercolor sets, brushes, mini acrylic paints, soft pastels, tacky glue, glue sticks, washi tape, scraps of paper, fabric, and yarn. All of these things had specific uses, but could be used over and over again for expanded art opportunities. As kits developed, we were thoughtful about pra best practices in terms of DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we took careful consideration in asking that participants use their own experiences and creativity when making a project, not simply copying the work of an artist or an art practice connected to cultural traditions. For one kit, we looked to artist Ashley Bryan, who you can see the picture here, who came to call Maine home. We were able to include a copy of his book, Beautiful Blackbird, ordered from our local bookstore. That in kit included materials for making bright, colorful cut paper collages. This project spawned lessons and projects that continue to be presented today as in-person has convened. All of Lisa's beautiful handouts can be reused for lessons now that we're back in person. And you can see here we're doing the um, more of the cut paper designs in person. So for more on the, some of the various kits, I give you Jessica Hamilton-Jones. Hi, my name is Jessica Hamilton-Jones. I'm an art and electives teacher for the Waterville Alternative Public High School. Um, I'm gonna highlight a few of our kits and I'm going to give a brief overview of a curriculum that I developed for my students to create a group art kit from start to finish. As we reflect, um, on all of the kits that have been produced, I realized that none of us could choose one or two favorites. There are many standout kits, but even the simplest ones made us smile with the heartwarming memories that they have given each of us. As each new kit was developed, new ideas were generated. We all grew and developed as a collaborative group alongside this process. Over time, we developed more complex themes that would connect us as a community with kits like the Faith Ringgold, Who Are Our Heroes Quilt. Students would send their artwork back to Serena at Waterville Creates, where she put them together to create a town art quilt. Art quilt. The Christmas Luminary Kits of 2020 and 2021 delivered over 3,000 kits to every student in the Waterville public school system. Luminaries were lit and displayed throughout the town as a literal shining beacon of how art connects us during a time of disconnection. Other kits began to accentuate themes geared toward new community partners. The Memories We Carry kit was designed around Children's Grief Awareness Month through the Hospice Volunteers of Waterville. Some of my favorite kits were developed from the group's love of nature and desire to preserve our environment. For example, kits like this Mason Bee House kit where students in the town could take an active role to help to save our pollinators. Contemporary artist Ian Trask inspired the Recycled Art Spores kit that focused on creating art from recycled and found materials. <clears throat> The Lion Relief Sculpture Kit was one of my personal favorites. It was inspired by Colby College Museum of Art's extensive collection of another main artist, Bernard Langley. 
and offered an opportunity to get people outside to enjoy art. I volunteered to make the video for this kit and I decided to travel to the Langley Sculpture Preserve in Cushing, Maine. I dragged my kids along to assist me in making the video introduction that I hoped would inspire people to visit a place where they could enjoy art outside during the pandemic. We all had a fantastic adventure and even my puppy had fun. <clears throat> so as the summer of 2021 came to an end, we began to think about ways to keep the art kits for all program going. With the opening of the new school year, I knew that I would soon have very little time to volunteer and contribute. I talked with the group about having my students create a kit from start to finish for one of the upcoming months. Being part of this program had helped me emotionally um, on so many levels, so I thought that this was an experience that would benefit my alternative learners. I began to develop an interdisciplinary curriculum um, to align this endeavor to our education standards. <clears throat> uh, Art Kits for All as an interdisciplinary uh, curriculum packs a powerful punch. My students met standards in the visual arts, social studies, English language arts, math, and science disciplines. Being a clear and effective communicator, a creative and practical problem solver, and a responsible and involved citizen are some of the social studies standards that they met with flying colors. <clears throat> so some of the basic steps that my students needed to go through, um, the first thing they needed to do was to agree on the activity for the November art kit. Um, and this needed to be based on either an artist, a culture, or an environmental inspiration. Um, and they decided on creating a corn husk doll. The students needed to reflect on the audience, what the age group would be who would be doing this project. Then they needed to research the Native American traditions behind this project. They had to determine the best way to express this knowledge respectfully to the community. The students all created Cornhusk dolls and that helped them figure out the steps that um, were needed that they would need to, uh, to document for the instructions and they also needed it to create a supply list. They needed to determine how many supplies they would need to make 125 kits on a budget of $10 per kit. What a great integration of using math skills. Students created the graphics and photos for the instructions and some made the instructional videos. Uh, when the supplies arrived, it was time to assemble the kits and they realized that that was much harder than they thought. Um, because of the pandemic, um, there were restrictions on the students and unfortunately they could not distribute the kits to the public. Um, they all did uh, get to bring home a kit if they had younger siblings and if they wanted it. And then the teen parents in my program all got to take home a kit as well. The rest of them were delivered back to the team where we distributed, distributed them to the public. Finally, we did some reflection. The students wrote essays. And as a teacher, I also reflected on this project. And I thought about the successful elements and what things could be changed. My students are predominantly from a low socioeconomic background. Often they feel disconnected from the community at large and they've encountered emotional trauma before, long before the pandemic brought its increased share of disconnection and social anxiety. I cannot express how important it is to offer students an opportunity to feel connected to their community and to experience how rewarding it feels to give to others. There were numerous ways for each student to contribute while successfully working together as a team. Because they chose the project's theme, they were invested and they were engaged in the process. The topic provided learning opportunities about diverse cultures and a more empathetic understanding of Native American cultures in our nation. While they were enjoying themselves, which they did, they were unaware of the social emotional benefits that this process delivered. In my opinion, the students gained much more than all of the interdisciplinary standards on the written page.
Great, so uh, that's my cue. Um, so my name is Serena Sanborn. I'm the Education and Outreach Manager at Waterville Creates. So um, as we grew the Art Kids program and we linked to community themes and artists, we added more collaborations with community partners. So here in this picture, you see our local children's librarian, Colby student volunteers, and our very favorite grandmother, Yvette, packing the Road Ahead kit for incarcerated men and women and their families. And Yvette was such a fan of getting kits for her grandkids, she decided to volunteer herself, and she's been volunteering with us for almost two years. So um, I was mostly the person who was reaching out to new organizations, um, and I either met with people in person or over Zoom to describe our kits and discover how we might collaborate. Once we described the kits, oh, every organization agreed to be part of the kit creations, really without fail. Um, we collaborated with some organizations that were not just nonprofits or educators or a part of an art of the arts fields at all. Um, this is longtime collaborator Michelle LeClaire from the Family Violence Project. She joined as a volunteer and realized the kits could help provide their domestic violence hotline number on our instruction sheets. At Family Violence Project, they saw domestic violence rising during the pandemic, and this was a small way we could help. So some of our collaborator, collaborators were businesses, some nonprofits, but each, of, each one helped us change and grow, and Michelle became an integral part of our team. Um, and so this is our kit with the um, Waterville Humane Society. This is was called Make a Cat Toy, which included yarn and dowel to make a toy for your cat. Um, we made cat art. We read a book about adapting a cat. We had a kitten adoption event at the kit distribution. And as you can imagine, this was very popular. Our collaborators often brought their own ideas and made each kit richer and connected to new audiences. The Humane Society brought out all the cat fans to the distribution event. <laughs> and then, um, at our local library, the Waterville Public Library, um, they have been working with us since almost the beginning. They give out the kits at the Library to Go program, um, while the awesome children's librarian Liz helps us pick out books to tie into the kit themes. Liz also offers her time to pack kits. So here you see their awesome display of our kit luminaries for the winter solstice, and we we mentioned that earlier. Um, it was one of my favorite my favorite kits. Um, and then here's John Meter. We worked with John Meter. Um, not only a small business owner of a wonderful traveling planetarium, but also our favorite photographer and a longtime art kit volunteer. We created a mosaic kit celebrating astronomy with John's input. John even made a video connecting his love of planets and comets with the art creations in the kits. Other collaborators included the Kennebec Valley Community Action Program, who gave out kits in parenting classes and at home visits with families and social workers. Um, we collaborated with the Hospice Volunteers of America in Waterville, the Children's Discovery Museum, three different Maine correctional facilities, the Waterville Farmers Market, a Peer Recovery Center, the Maine Film Center, and many more. We had about 32 unique collaborations um, thus far. Okay, and now I'm going to switch a little bit <laughs> gears into the challenges. So we do want to address some of the challenges we faced along the way. Um, we are guessing you all have some questions about that probably. We did our best to pivot as the pandemic changed, which I'm sure many of you can identify with um, because as science changed, we changed our approach. So first of all, the kits are expensive. We had multiple ways that we fundraised though. We asked different organizations for donations. We used the online platform, Give Lively with the Public, having each, and we had each of our collaborating organizations purchase supplies. So once we added children's books to the kit, we also at Waterville Creates reallocated some budget money to the books. They were expensive. And at the museum, funds that were designed or designated to support K through 12 field trips were reallocated to support this project, which also serves mostly families with K through 12 age children. Um, another challenge was we struggled with the lack of feedback and visible results. So here is some rare feedback from a social worker at Kennebec Valley Action Program. Um, we know these kits worked, but we did not always see the art projects or how people felt during or after the creating process. So we did try a feedback form. We did not have much success with that. So we mostly have relied on testimonials where we can get them. Um, we will share some of those um, testimonials near the end. And then lastly, this seems obvious, right? But COVID really slowed things down in many ways. Having the kits in prisons, um, in the correctional facilities was especially challenging. 
where outbreaks of COVID are common. Um, communication with the correctional facilities was complex and is complex at the best of times, and it just got harder in COVID. We also had staff that were furloughed and laid off at my organization and at others. We were not able to use Colby student volunteers to help with packing and distributing kits in the community because of gathering restrictions put in place by the college that kept the campus and community healthy and safe. And then when supplies were low because of COVID, we had to order in advance or change materials we used. And as mentioned before, we packed ahead of time, we masked at all times, et cetera. But in a way, COVID really made us more creative. We really had to innovate, to change, and be flexible in our thinking. So next, um, each of us is just gonna share a couple successes and testimonials for partner, from partners and participants. So the Family Violence Project has been very excited about being a part of this project for many reasons. We got a quote from them that says, we know how much creativity can help with healing and resilience for kids, as well as the feeling that your community cares about you. All of the agencies involved are listed on the kits and it gave us an opportunity to put our helpline number out there for those who, need it, who may need it. We were also able to distribute kits to children in shelter and survivors in the community. In a year of such turmoil, this project has been a ray of sunshine and hope. Michelle Claire. And I have a quote from a parent. It reads, working from home throughout the pandemic while also being a full-time mom was incredibly challenging. And I was always looking for alternatives to screen time to keep my daughter entertained. The art kits for all were such a gift to our family because they provided focused, meaningful, engaging activities with clear step-by-step -step instructions and all of the needed supplies, which was a huge time saver for me. The kits allowed me to spend my limited time creating with my daughter, rather than looking for an activity and then trying to find materials. My daughter always looked forward to the next kit. So um, mine is uh, my own observation from the community's response. Um, the Art Kids for All program began to acquire regular followers, um, regular community, community members who would come by all of our designated distribution sites each month. I recall one mother who would walk with her children to one of the food pantry sites. I was touched when she gave me um, a $10 donation to sponsor one of the Art Kids. I thought, here's a woman who needed food assistance, and yet she was compelled to let us know how much she appreciated receiving these art kits every month by giving us her donation. We may not always have received written feedback, but the warm community response spoke volumes, I think, to all of us. And then um, I'm going to read us a little bit about how um, so each of us, I think, changed during the program, and we have just a short quote from one of our partners, but this is from Becky at um, Kennebec Valley Community Action Program, who had never really been doing art making, and out of volunteering and creating these kits, she really, it really changed her, and she said, I have absolutely loved working with all of you, and you have inspired me on a personal note to take time to be creative without judging what the outcome looks like. It is good for the soul. And so now we're just going to hand it over to Chris to close out with the Art Kits future. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Yeah. So, you know, we went from, you know, handing out kits twice a month to various locations. And then when the school year started, we were kind of smart and decided to do it once a month with more kits. And now this last fall, we started um, working more with just like individual organizations. And so now, you know, we're at kind of another point in the pandemic. And I think some of the things that we've been thinking a lot about is how to figure out how to integrate these art kits into our growing in-person programs and larger initiatives that all of us are doing. So some of the things that we have coming up are we'll be adding art kits to our Art in the Park weekly summer programs. We did that last summer and it worked really well. So we'll continue that. We also have a teen program called Slice. 
And we incorporate art kits into that program as well, which has been a terrific way to um, add a, that an interactive component to that program at a time when we had to go virtual. We also are going to be developing art kits for teen parent programs, again, created by the teens with the art kits for all educators. So we'll have that collaboration started. We're going to be creating art kits in partnership with key audiences in Waterville who have access barriers. So that's, I think, a, a directional shift that we've been making. You know, place communities like the elderly, adults with special needs, homeless shelters, correctional facilities, places that still are not really able to participate in in-person and they don't have a lot of materials at hand. We also um, have just talked about, you know, one of the comments that we received from uh, Becky was that there was, a, there was a parent who talked about how she loved doing the kits with her daughter, but she was kind of sad about it in a way because she knew she couldn't do it herself because she couldn't afford it and she didn't feel like she was creative. And so one of the things we've been thinking a lot about is empowering adult caregivers to feel more comfortable making art in their homes and with children. And we'll have the kits, but we also thought let's use the schools as a setting for an evening studio program that's led by community arts educators. So we're bringing together all of us as partners, community folks and educational folks in the schools. And I think now we're ready for questions. <laughs> Yay!